tonight I'm going to tie something a little bit different that I'm calling the psychosis shrimp. Um, it looks quite a bit like a Borsky slider, but I'm sure that this thing is destined to be a redfish killer. Um, wouldn't doubt at all that it would work quite well on uh, bonefish as well, maybe downsize it a little bit. Um, pretty simple to tie. We're going to start off uh, with a Dairiki, uh 930 number 2 size hook, some tan Flymaster Plus. Um, I do recommend using the heavier 210 in this particular case because we're working with an Enrico uh, brush and because of the wire it's really easy to clip some of the lighter threads. Anyway, I'm going to tie back just a little ways in the front here and trim my tag end off and I'm going to park a uh, 5 32nd lead eye right here in the front. You want to keep this fairly close to the front of the hook. Uh, you'll see why here a little later on. Now that I've got that locked in I'm going to come on back down the hook and instead of stopping at a normal place right here where the wire is still you know uh, horizontal I'm actually going to run it up just a fraction of an inch uh, beyond that point so it's got a slight upward curve and then we're going to bring it back to the the level part of the shank here. Now this is a just plain tan uh, Enrico fiber. This is a full length. I'm going to start off by cutting this length in half. Now as you can see this is quite a bit more substantial amount than I would use on a standard let's say an EP deceiver. Um, I want this tail to be a fairly full, um, look fairly full. Now, I'm going to turn my vise upside down here, and I'm going to fold the material across the thread, even it up on the ends, and I'm going to bring it and V it over the point of the hook. Try to get as far back as you can on the horizontal part of the shank there. Put a couple of wraps and then bring this material back and put a few thread wraps. Now make sure that you get it level on the uh, hook. Okay, I've got it tied down. Now I'm going to turn this back upright again. And I'm going to start off by taking my poodle brush. You can do this with a comb too. And just kind of comb this a little bit. It tends to blend the fibers. Makes it look a little bit nicer and it's going to pay off in the end here. Okay. Now, this is a EP Tarantula Hairy Leg Brush. It's the one inch length size. They make it in half inch and one inch. Um, this particular color is tan, I believe, as well. Yeah, it's tan. I'm going to take that and I'm going to tie it as far back on my jam knot as I can. Get it locked down. Four or five wraps and then I'm going to wrap all the way so the thread is right behind the lead eyes. Now we're going to take this hairy leg brush and I'm going to palmer it around the hook and make sure that you stroke back on the material so you don't over wrap it with the next wrap. And we're doing these wraps fairly close. I want the body to be fairly dense so 
we've got quite a ways to go here kind of pick it out a little bit as you go helps keep it straight Just keep palmering this material forward. Now make sure that it's fairly dense right here up in the front. Um, you want this completely full. Okay, I've got all that done. I'm going to put about three or four wraps over the wire. Try to not mash down any of your material. I kind of work my thread a little bit. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to trim the wire brush away. Kind of stroke all your material back. And next I've got some nice little very shiny gold rubber legs. I've got three of them and I pulled them right off of the bundle so that the ends are still in, you know encased in that little bit right at the end so they don't come get in the uh, it's easier to tie them in so I'm gonna kinda lay them over the top of where I'm at right now kinda match the ends and I'm gonna do an X wrap over the over these uh, rubber legs kind of get them in position Then I'm going to pull them back and I'm going to put a couple of thread wraps in front here. Now, since there isn't a lot of thread holding these rubber legs down, I'm going to go ahead and just brush it lightly with a little bit of uh, brushable crazy glue. Kind of glue everything down tight. Okay. Last step for this is the... Uh, Weed guard. I've got a pair of uh, this is 16 pound hard mason. I'm going to fold a length of that in half. And I've got my these are chain nose pliers, nice, you know, fine point. I'm going to crush the monofilament right at the back. Now, if you've been having problems getting your weed guards to stand upright. Best, easiest way is I've got that nice hard fold in this. I'm going to slip it over the hook. Try to get my legs out of the way. And I'm not going to pull it up tight. I'm going to put about three gentle wraps of thread around that. You can see that the tag end of the mono is still down here. Okay. I've got that. Now I'm going to kind of pull down tight and I'm going to pull the mono up so the back of that uh, loop is right up tight against the hook. Now I'm going to put a few wraps in the front and then I'm going to come back behind the mono and, and wrap and I'm kind of wrapping this direction with it as I'm putting thread behind the monofilament trying to get it to stand up nice and straight 
couple of wraps in the front again. Now they're kind of crossed a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and pull on them a little bit and try to get them in position. It's pretty good right there. Now, again, it's a good idea to use a little bit of brushable crazy glue and soak that whole area with some crazy glue, kind of lock it in place. I'm going to go ahead and whip finish this. Try not to get my rubber legs in my whip finish. Damn. And I'm going to trim my thread away. Okay. Few more steps yet. First thing I do is I pull down on these silicone legs and I cut them away from that. So now we've got them nice and loose. Um, and I also need to trim my uh, weed guard. I, I like these little shears for this. These are diagonal cutters. Um, I'm going to get in here get just above the hook point level and go ahead and turn off my mono weed guard. Next I'm going to get everything out of the way and I'm going to come in and, and just trim the back of this down flat so it isn't quite as buggy on top. And then now that I've got that all done, I'll be back in just a minute. We're gonna uh, hit this back end with some Copic markers and mark it up really nicely. Okay, it's a good thing to have your markers ready and in place. Now I'm gonna use some Copic markers. I'm going to use three colors. I'm going to use a yellow number 17, a green number 99, and then an, uh, I don't know what you'd call this. This is a brown. It's an E59. Um, not my favorite brown, but uh, it's the one that I've got. Uh, more of a redwood color would probably be a better bet. Uh, but we're going to start off with, with these. I'm going to use the um, broad end of the yellow and it's good to keep this stretched out just once not do it several times okay I am going to lay in a angled bar on this material and you just do this by pushing down and letting it soak in I'm going to give it a little space and I'm going to do it again. Now this will print through to the opposite side. And I'm going to do three bars. Make sure you get your colors good. Okay, keep it stretched out. Don't do this in several steps. Okay, I've got the broad end of the brown now and I'm going to lay it right next to the yellow. You can see the brown takes a lot better than the yellow. Okay, I'm still kept keep keeping it stretched out and I'm going to grab my marker and I'm going to use my olive marker and, I, and I'm going to use the fine point end of it. 
Now, all I'm trying to do is mark it on the edge of the brown, just a light mark. just a fine fine mark okay so as you can see you've got the yellow going into the brown that's going into the olive it's subtle give it a some nice color anyway this one is done this is the psychosis shrimp and as I say I'll bet you that this is gonna work great for some redfish I wouldn't doubt that it would work for bonefish as well. Thanks.